Dear brothers and sisters, I want to take you for a moment, subhanAllah, to a scene that should literally shape every single moment of our breathing existence in this life, which is the scene of the Day of Judgment when a person rises from their grave and a person starts to make their way to whatever place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destined for them to assume in that majlis, in that gathering. Now subhanAllah, as you're going around and you're meeting all of these extraordinary people, people that you have heard about, people that have inspired you, people that you have sought to follow, people like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Anbiya, the Prophets of Allah, you see Musa alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam and Nuh alayhi salam and Ibrahim alayhi salam, the family and companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ridwanullahi ta'ala alayhim, you're going to see a bunch of people who you don't know. Some of those people will have incredibly high ranks with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as you're going through that gathering and you're paying attention to these people that you have no idea what their names are or what they did to achieve that spot, you might be asking questions. Is this a person that lived in a previous generation that sought to do great things or that maybe achieved great things that I didn't know about? Or is this a person who did things that other people did not see as so great. Let me rephrase that for a moment. There are people that were great people in the past that did incredibly impactful things, but perhaps the attribution from a worldly perspective was not there. People attributed that greatness or that impact, that effect to another figure, to another group. And there are other people who lived amongst their people and what they were doing seemed seemingly small and they might have been looked at with a sense of irrelevance but at the end of the day now they've all been elevated to this place alongside the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the greatest people to ever live now as you're inquiring there are a few things to keep in mind from the first category of people those who sought to impact the times that they lived in, but not necessarily get the credit. They are a category of mukhlisun, a category of sincere people who never wanted to be celebrated in this life, but only wanted to be celebrated in the next. And wallahi, behind every single great effort and behind every single transformative figure is a great group and a great figure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that takes joy in seeing the work being celebrated without their name being attributed to it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we will write down what they have put forth and we will write down their footsteps or their effect. Atharahum can mean two things. It can speak to the precision by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records your steps, even the steps that you make towards good. Or it could speak to your athar as in your effect, your impact. Because you might have impacted things in ways that are not so tangible or obviously quantifiable in this life. And so it's the group of people that are mukhlisun, a group of sincere people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that sought a rank with Him, not necessarily a rank in this world. And then there's the second group of people. People that did relatively small things, that lived relatively ordinary lives, but somehow they have this rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is who I want to speak about right now. When you talk about the seven people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions as categories of those that are shaded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a day when there will be no shade except for His. A just ruler. And subhanAllah, if the ruler is just, if a leader is just, then they are able to implement a society that inculcates the virtues that are found in the next six categories. A just ruler builds masajid. And so, you know, you have another category of those who used to frequent the masajid. A just ruler encourages places of religious growth for young people, where the masajid are. And so, young people grow up attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A just ruler encourages and sets a tone in society. 
where people can love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they live in an environment in which virtue flourishes. They don't have to cheat to get ahead. They love for the right reasons and they love in the right places. They come together to do those things that are encouraged from the very top all the way to the bottom of society. So you've got sort of this culture that's being created in this society of those people that are shaded under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then you've got these people, three categories. A person who was called by a woman of great beauty and status, فَقَالَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهِ And they said, I fear Allah. You've got a person who merely resisted a direct message. You've got a person who resisted an environment to where they were able to commit that sin to fulfill a lust and desire and they held themselves back for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have a person who remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in private and shed a tear. You have a person who gave sadaqah in a way that their right hand gave without their left hand even knowing. But I want you to think about as you're meeting this group of people on the Day of Judgment, when you meet this person who is sitting in the league of prophets and just rulers and leaders and reformers throughout history. And what did you do to get here? I resisted my desire when there was an open opportunity for me to fulfill it. All I did was I held myself back from that which was displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in an authentic hadith, have taqwa in regards to those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited and you're going to be of the greatest class of worshippers. Be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with what Allah has apportioned to you and you will be the richest of people. It's a profound hadith for many different reasons but particularly as it pertains to this talk. You know, you usually in this life get celebrated because of the things that you do. And most of the people that are celebrated on the Day of Judgment are celebrated for things they didn't do. That's what the Prophet ﷺ is saying. Because they held themselves back from things that were displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah knows how hard that is. And when you do that for His sake, you are expressing a level of devotion. You're expressing a level of dedication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that puts you in the ranks of prophets and martyrs. Think about how incredible that is. And I want you to think about this from a practical perspective. Is it harder for you to stay up all night in the last 10 nights of Ramadan and pray in the masjid and listen to an inspiring khatira and make dua? Or is it harder for you to walk away from a relationship that you know is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when every fiber of your being desires that relationship. Which one's more difficult? And that's where the greater reward is. See, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look to the certificates that you have. Allah does not look to the accolades. Allah does not look to the quantity of things. Allah looks at the depth of the quality of your sacrifice. What are you willing to give up for my sake? What are you willing to walk away from for my sake? What are you willing to strive for for my sake? Because good deeds make you feel good anyway and so people will naturally incline towards all sorts of good deeds because they render a certain type of goodness inside of you. You feel good. You go to Salat al-Fajr, you come to a conference, you read Qur'an, yes, you might be tired, you might have sacrificed sleep, you might have sacrificed something else, but you feel good. Your soul immediately feels good. Your mood changes. You feel happy, emotionally satisfied, mentally set. But when you walk away from something that your heart desires, that your soul desires, when you walk away from a craving, it's painful. And other people will not celebrate you for that. But the one who made you will celebrate you for it. Meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the midst of all sorts of opportunities to displease Him and saying, Ya Allah, I tried. You know, many of you may have heard the hadith where the Prophet said to the companions of the Prophet 
that after you, O companions, are days that require great patience. To be patient in those days is like holding on to a burning hot coal. And the Prophet says, and for those who come after you that hold on to that burning hot coal is the reward of 50. He said, 50 of them, Ya Rasulullah. He said, no, 50 of you. Now, SubhanAllah, I want you to think about this. You've read about Badr. You've read about Uhud. How many of you have heard the story of Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu under the stone? You've heard the story of Bilal. You've heard the story of Sumayya radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa radiallahu anha. You've heard the stories of these people. Can any one of us say that we have been put to the test in regards to our sacrifices the way that they were? Can anyone in here say that they've been tested for La ilaha illallah the way that Bilal or Salman or Sumayya have been tested? Has anyone been forced to be subjected to starvation and dehydration and torture and been made a refugee and killed even by their parents for being a Muslim in here? Probably not. And so when the Prophet ﷺ is saying this to the companions, that after you, O companions, come these days that require an incredible amount of patience. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, is not talking about sabrul mashaqqa, a sabr ala mashaqqa, being patient with trial and tribulation. Rather, as many of the ulama explain, the Prophet وسلم, is talking about a sabr ala shahwa, to be patient with your desires. What does that mean? You have more access to haram, to fulfill your desires in a moment with your phone than any generation that came before you could ever imagine. It takes you seconds to corrupt your soul in a way that other people would have physically had to put themselves in a place to corrupt their soul. Other people would have had to worry about being seen, being caught. Other people would have had to worry about social stigma. Other people would have had to worry about the time and the place. You know, there's a mindset. Like when you're physically going to a place to commit haram, as you're going there, that gives you time to think about what you're going to do and perhaps turn you back away. That requires an element of dedication to your desires, if that makes sense. That you're going to go out there and commit haram somehow. Right now, it is literally the burning coal in your hands. This is your burning coal right here. It doesn't take you but a few seconds to fulfill your desires. It doesn't take you but a few seconds to taint your soul. Now when you can meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having said that, Ya Allah, the temptation of shaitan was literally in my hand and I spent my entire life trying to make sure that I feared you in regards to it, you might find yourself on the Day of Judgment amongst the prophets and the martyrs and the legends that you read about in books. Because you restrained yourself. Allah did not say that as for the one who prayed all night and fasted all day, that Jannah is their ending. Tell me where in the Quran it says that. Rather, those who restrain themselves for my sake, Jannah is their refuge. Those who fear Allah in private, those who fear Allah in the unseen, they do what they can even as no one else sees them to be in a situation in which they are sacrificing the most belligerent of desires that they have for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even trying to convert those moments of privacy into moments of worship. That's a wali of Allah. That's a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not a normal person. And so you don't have normal circumstances today. You don't have a normal set of temptations today. Everything about this time is abnormal. Everything about this time is abnormal. But that means that the reward of doing things that might seem seemingly insignificant is also abnormal. And that's when the Prophet ﷺ says, you have the reward of 50, bidnillahi ta'ala. And so I want you to remember this hadith, if you can, inshallah ta'ala, what the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, be mindful or fear Allah in regards to the things that He has prohibited, and you will be of the greatest of worshippers. 
and be pleased with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has apportioned to you and you will be the richest of people. How many people think that I will be good with my religiosity? I'll be good with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll be satisfied with continuing to make dua if Allah just gives me this thing that I'm asking Him for. You condition your religiosity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, look, I'm making dua. Oh Allah, give me what I'm asking you the way that I'm asking you for here and watch the way that I respond to what you're asking of me in the future. It doesn't work that way with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look yourself in the mirror today and say, I am the richest person in the world because alhamdulillah, I have everything that I need to be a good Muslim. Allah has provided for me enough stability, enough security, and much love, enough blessing to where I feel sufficed, alhamdulillah, Everything Allah gives me, gives me as bonus because Allah gave me Islam. Allah gave me a sense of purpose. Allah gave me a mission. Allah gave me a paradise to seek that is eternally blessed, never boring, and never limited. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people of Al-Firdaus Al-A'la. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to overcome the pull of our desires in private and in public. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to please Him with our set of circumstances, no matter what those circumstances are. Allahumma ameen. Assalamu alaikum Islam Box family. We need your support more than ever. Your support can help us continue to educate and motivate people to make and publish videos daily. Jazakallah.